What's going on guys? My name is Nick Foy, the founder of AskNickFoy.com. Make sure you check out that website when you're done here on YouTube. It's got tons of great content I've published for free in the form of blog articles as well as the video content I'm publishing here on my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today is website speed. I'm gonna give you eight tips that you can use to speed up your website so that it loads faster, it makes your, your visitors much, much happier with you uh, because lo slow loading websites, you know, people get impatient, they get annoyed. A lot of times they'll click that back button, leave your website and decide never to come back again. So we don't want that happening. And if you're brand new, thinking about starting a blog, these eight tips are gonna help you get off on the right foot. These are things I wish I would've known when I first started my blog and was first setting things up. I could've optimized my website from the beginning and that could've helped me have a much faster website than I do now. And over time, I've been making changes though to my websites to help speed them up even more, but they're not 100% as fast as they could be because of some things I aired that I've learned since then and now I've included them in today's eight tips. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into these eight tips that I'm gonna be showing you so that you can start tweaking your website and make it load faster. All right, so here we've got the eight tips to help you speed up your website and make sure that it's, you know, the pages are loading fast and that you're able to retain your website traffic. They're not getting annoyed at slow page load times where they decide to hit the back button. So fast website speed tips. Number one, pick a fast web hosting company. So when you're first setting up your website, the very first step is to pick out web hosting before you pick out your domain name and install WordPress to it. So your web hosting companies, you know, there's Bluehost, SiteGround. Uh, those are the two that come to my mind first as far as, you know, going with uh, an affordable yet fast web hosting company. Uh, you can look up, you know, different speed test articles online to see which one's faster, but I don't know that they're going to make that marginal of a difference. So, for example, I host my websites on Bluehost. So if you go to asknickfoy.com slash Bluehost, that's my affiliate link that will take you over to Bluehost, and it'll let them know that I sent you as I've partnered with Bluehost. Um, so just let them know, you know, I sent you by using that link and that's going to help us both out. You're going to be able to get hosting for as low as $3.95 a month. So you just click the green get started now button. And if you decide Bluehost isn't working for you, they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So once you click this green button here, it's going to show you their different plans. If you've just got your one website, you can start with the basic $3.95 plan. Uh, if you do have multiple websites or you have tons of website traffic where you need your own dedicated IP, you could go to their GoPro plan. So this is for bigger websites that you know need the uh, dedicated IP address to handle all the different traffic. The rest of these are like shared hosting. So there's other websites on the same server as you. So you should be fine you know, if you've got a smaller, medium-sized website. But large websites, you're going to want to check out their GoPro plan. This is the plan I'm currently on. Uh, due to the amount of traffic my websites get every month and you get some different features you know with the dedicated IP like the SSL certificate domain privacy site backup things like that alright so that would be the first tip pick fast web hosting because every time somebody tries to load your website it's first gonna try to contact the web server and it's gonna have to load all your different files that are hosted over on your web co hosting company so if it's you know you want to make sure that's a fast server that you're, you're running on Number two, pick a fast website theme. This is another one people overlook. They get these big fancy WordPress themes that are loaded with all kinds of features and that can slow down websites. So if you want a lighter, a lighter WordPress theme that it's not so heavy and so bulky and that'll help your website load faster. So here again, if you wanna use my affiliate link to help me out and get credit, you can go to asknickfoy.com slash theme forest with one R, so F-O-R-E-S-T, theme forest. If you type that in, I'll again link to these below in the video description. It's gonna send you over here to theme forest and it's gonna tell them, you know, you were referred by Nfoy 2013, so that tells them I sent you and it helps credit me if you end up getting a theme. Now, this is a marketplace that's got all kinds of themes. So if you go here under the WordPress tab, they've got all kinds of categories, depending on what type of website you have, or you could just go here to popular items, 
and the X theme is a pretty light, pretty fast theme. The Aveda theme, or the Avada theme, depending on how you pronounce it, this is the one I was running a lot of my websites on, and I still am, and I'm eventually thinking of switching over to a lighter theme to kind of to speed up my website and to get it more you know light, lightened up because this has tons of features I don't use and it's really kind of bogging down my website causing my page load times to be a little slower than they should be so the X theme is a good one it's only twenty nine dollars by ThemeCo you can click on this link here and it'll take you to like a little demo where you can see what it looks like different features they have but that would be my recommendation there for a fast theme you can also check out the Genesis theme framework and the Divi theme um, those are two other themes out there that you could check out and purchase that should be pretty fast as far as giving you good website speed all right tip number three here use only plugins that are necessary and delete unused plugins so every time you install a plugin it adds more files to your website and to your databases and every time page loads it's got to load all that that css javascript html all the different code plus all your plugin codes so the less plugins you have probably the faster your website will run so only use necessary plugins and try to delete any plugins you're not currently using so if you've got a bunch of plugins that are inactive in your plugins you know uh, page and inside your WordPress dashboard go in and delete those uh, but you know if, if you're running 40 different plugins you're gonna be a lot slower than a website that's running off five or ten plugins but again you need to make sure you're still using plugins that are absolutely necessary don't just cut off all your plugins. I mean, if you need them, use them, but just try to avoid unnecessary plugins that, that really don't add much value to your website. And then number four, optimize images. Images make up a big file size on pages. So I showed you this in another video, but if we do the GT metrics test, if you go to gtmetrics.com, there's another speed site called Pingdom. It's got a speed testing tool. I can enter in a URL, which could be like your home page. You could send like a landing page or an opt-in page you want to test that people are going to land on or a sales page. You could do individual blog articles, whatever URL you want to type in, then hit enter. It's going to go ahead and analyze the site here for me and it's going to spit back how fast this website page loads. It's going to also tell me the file size of that page. So in this case, you're going to see golfpracticeguides.com that it's analyzing right now typically loads between 10 and 13 seconds and it's about four and a half megabytes in size which is pretty big a lot of people's home pages are only you know one megabyte maybe two megabytes uh, or less but this is a 4.47 megabyte size and that's why it's taking almost 11 seconds here to load uh, just because it's a bigger page and so when we scroll down here you can see all the different things that they've got highlighted red yellow green that you can fix to try to optimize your page speed uh, but if we go into the waterfall i believe it is it's going to give me a more detailed breakdown here of what things load um, so one of the things that you know makes this page load so long for is images i think images make up almost four megabytes of this 4.5 megabyte total so if i got rid of all of my images on my home page here this page size would shrink down considerably and you'd also see my page load time drop as well. So that ties back in here to tip number four, optimize images and compress them before uploading. So the less images you have on a page, the faster that page will probably load because images add more you know, file size to a web page. And if you don't optimize them, you know, images, image file sizes alone, sometimes they're in the megabytes there, you know, but if you can get them down into small kilobyte sizes. So, you know, for example, on my home page here, you know, one of my images right here might only be 15 kilobytes or 30 kilobytes. Originally it might've been 300 kilobytes, but you can use different image compressing uh, services. There's free websites out there. I use bulk resize photos.com. And then there's other image compression services out there that you just upload an image to that server that service they'll compress it down to its smallest file size without distorting the image um, unless you want to take down the scale of the image but a lot of times i leave it at 100 percent so the image size will still be the same size same quality it'll just compress the file size down as small as it can and then I'll, once it's compressed and it's optimized then i'll upload it to wordpress into my page now that I know it's as small as it can be. That way it'll keep my page size as small as possible.
There's also a plugin called Smush that you could download on your WordPress website that might be able to compress it additionally a little bit even more and that could help you shrink those image sizes down. Number five, you can use a caching plugin like W3TC. There's other ones out there like WordPress Fastest Cache uh, and I can't think of the third one right now but those can help you know cache pages so that when your visitors come to them they load faster so install one of those just go into your plugins hit click add new and then just search like cache c a c h e and it'll bring up a list of different plugins that relate to that and again i you know i use the w3 uh, tc plugin number six clean your wordpress every few months so if you've got post drafts that are sitting in your blog post editor that you're not you know gonna do anything with or you've got pages that are sitting as drafts in your page editor um, if you've got a bunch of deleted files in your trash bin you can go ahead and permanently delete them and kind of clean out your trash bin if you've got images in your media library that are not actively used on your blog if you're using them like on the home page or in a blog article or your sidebar your footer then you have to leave them in your media library I believe deleting them will cause an error then on your home page where that image will no longer show up but if there's images in your media library you're not using at all, make sure you delete those out because again, they take up extra space in your databases and in your WordPress library. And then again, any unused plugins. So just kind of clean up your WordPress site every couple months, deleting things that you're not using that aren't necessary. That'll help free up space in the databases and in your overall WordPress file size. Steven, you can use a CDN like Cloudflare, it's free. So we'll come over here to cloudflare.com. Again, you'll just click the sign up, make a free account, and you can connect a website to it. Basically what it is, is if you think about you know, connecting your website to like a server. So there might be servers in, let's say like Atlanta or Los Angeles, and you might be in the Midwest somewhere like in Kansas or Oklahoma. So your website's gonna have to ping out to like a server in another city. So like if it pings all the way out to Atlanta, or for example somebody around the world in another country so by using like a CDN like Cloudflare if I'm explaining it right uh, you know I'm not hundred percent sure uh, Cloudflare but basically it's got these different servers set up around the world so that it can you know kind of load load your website a lot quicker for you it kind of auto saves different things in these networks so that when people are trying to get connected to your website when the page starts loading it'll automatically pull resources that have already been saved to the CDN so again it's more advanced uh, it's something you should look into further watching other video tutorials on it before you try doing it there's lots of tutorials on YouTube of how to set up Cloudflare and kind of get a better understanding of what it is what it does but it it basically kind of helps people from around the world it kind of shortens the distance so if they're around you know somewhere across the world and they're trying to connect to your website it, they might be far away and you know things have to travel a shorter distance when you use like a CDN to help speed up the load times number eight minimize external script requests so again this sounds confusing but if you think about all the different requests your website has to do when it's loading a page so internal script requests would be like loading plugins images things like that that are internal inside your website external requests are things like when you've installed Google Analytics to your website you've got Facebook ads or your Facebook's connected to your website um, different you know API keys that it has to load those scripts those can take longer and make your website load slower so only use like the necessary ones like of course Google Analytics and if you're running Facebook ads and you want to track Facebook ad conversions then of course you're gonna need that but you know if you're using like your email service like MailChimp ConvertKit uh, Aweber or Optin Monster, you know, these are third party websites that you've connected to your WordPress site. So your website's got a call on those scripts to load uh, when it loads a page. So just try to minimize those. And overall, those will those eight tips alone should help you have a pretty fast website because you know overall these had to do with like file sizes and, and things like that. That's the big thing that can slow down a website. You know, these first two things are really important how fast your server responds when somebody tries loading your website uh, and then your theme you know how how light or how hardcore packed your theme is with features can impact if it loads if your website loads quick or not uh, if you've got tons of unnecessary plugins that can slow down your database load speeds because you've got all these files and all these requests that have to go through images 
Uh, caching plugin can help speed things up for people. Cleaning out unnecessary, unused things can help speed you up. Using a CDN to reduce you know, the server connectivity and stuff from people that are all over the world. It, you can just host things in, in Cloudflare and it'll help your pages load much, much faster. And then minimizing external script requests. So those are the eight tips that we covered today. I hope you learned something new here. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more valuable content and uploads we come out with each week. And you can check out our playlist as well to see different topics that might be you know, of interest or that you need help with. So check those playlists out and see which video topics that you can go through. And then lastly, if you need any courses on how to become a better blogger, how to set up a blog that makes money, how to set up a store, you can go over here to asknickfoy.com slash courses, or you can use the subdomain asknickfoy.teachable.com. That'll take you over here to my course page that I host on Teachable. So when students sign up for my courses, they get enrolled and then it takes them into their dashboard where they can start watching all the video lessons, download PDF files, worksheets, different resources that come with the courses. So I've got one that's gonna teach you how to become a profitable blogger that makes money from blogging. If that's you know a goal of yours to become a full-time blogger and make a living off your website. If you're trying to figure out how to drive traffic to your products, to your website, you can learn how to use Pinterest and this Pinterest mastery course. So those are two big courses that have sold, you know, we've had a lot of students enroll in them. And then we've got the email marketing course teaching you how to build an email list, trying to sell things through email. So thank you so much for checking out these eight tips today. Again, make sure you're subscribed. I want to, you know, be able to send you guys the best uh, videos and tips out there on blogging, on marketing. And the only way to do that is to be subscribed so that you get those notifications when we come out with this new amazing content. I'll see you guys in the next video upload and until then, work hard.